Software engineering is about breaking down a big problem into smaller pieces, and APIs are what connect these pieces to create something that makes an impact. At its core, an API defines a set of rules and protocols that allow different software applications to communicate with each other. It acts as an intermediary facilitating the exchange of data and functionalities between various systems, platforms, or services. API stands for Application Programming Interface. It's an interface between an application and other applications that want to communicate with it using programming. They're used everywhere, from social media integrations to e-commerce. So if you're a student, it's really important to understand what these are and how they work. No matter what your job ends up being in tech, you're probably gonna use APIs. Now, before we get into it, Big shout out to Postman for sponsoring this video. Postman is a tool that simplifies the process of testing, documenting, and sharing your APIs. So after watching this video, you can check out the Postman Student Program, which is a free course tailored to those new to APIs and eager to learn the fundamentals in a beginner-friendly manner. The link will be down below. Now let's talk APIs. API interactions follow a request response model, where a client sends a request to a server and the server responds accordingly. They represent two software services. When the client sends the request, they'll include information such as what action they want the second service to take and any data required for that action. If the server is able to do the action, it will respond with a successful response. Otherwise, it'll return an error. So the core idea is simple. Smaller pieces of software exist and they use APIs to share and communicate data, which ultimately come together to create large applications. However, with APIs comes a lot of terminology. For example, there are many different protocols in which communication can be performed. There's HTTP, there's GraphQL, there's gRPC, there's WebSockets. The protocol you use depends on which APIs the server makes available and your use case. For example, HTTP is a stateless protocol that's commonly used for web communication. GraphQL, introduced by Facebook, provides a more efficient alternative, but the server you're requesting data from might not have it available for you to use yet. The most common type of protocol is HTTP, so that's what we'll be using for this tutorial. We'll break down the different terminology used with HTTP, and from there, you can use this knowledge to learn about the other communication protocols. Now, when you're communicating with another software service, you need to provide it with what action you want to take. Do you want to retrieve data from the software service? Do you want to update data another software service has? It's all about what you want to achieve via communication. HTTP does this through HTTP methods. First, there's GET. This is the most common, and it's about retrieving data from another software service. For example, one software service might know about the weather, so we could retrieve it using that service's API and use the GET HTTP method. There's also POST. When POST is used, typically it's about creating a new resource. For example, one software service might send a POST request to a database service to add data to the database. Their request would have all the data needed to add an entry to the database. When the second service gets the request, they would create the entry and then send back a successful response to the requesting software service. Put is similar to post, but it has to do with updating an existing piece of data. For example, one software service might want to update a piece of data, such as the temperature, for the weather service. Two other methods that exist are delete and patch. Delete is where one software service requests another to remove a piece of data, and patch is where partial modifications are made to a resource. This is different than put because put updates the entire resource. Now this HTTP method will be a part of the request that the client sends to the server. There are also other components of that request. For example, the request body. The request body contains additional data that the client wants to send to the server, along with the request. This data could be in various formats, such as JSON, XML, or form-encoded data. HTTP requests also include headers. Headers provide metadata about the request, such as the content type, authentication credentials, and any other relevant information. On the server side, when a request is received, it's processed and a response is generated. 
The response typically includes a status code, headers, and an optional response body. The status code indicates the outcome of the request, whether it was successful or encountered an error. Some common status codes include 200 OK for successful requests, 404 not found for resources that couldn't be found, and 500 internal server error for unexpected server errors. In addition to the status code, the response headers provide metadata about the response, similar to how headers are used in requests. Finally, the response body contains the data returned by the server in response to the client's request. This data could be in various formats, depending on the API and type of request. Understanding the request and response structure is essential for using APIs and building robust applications that leverage their power. With this knowledge, you can design and implement systems that seamlessly integrate with other software services. If you want to practice making API requests, check out my other video linked down below. I use Postman to test APIs, and they have this really cool code button where you can convert the API request into any programming language and directly integrate it with your code. I also recommend checking out the Postman student program. It's a great way to practice using APIs, and it's free for students. To sign up today, use my link down in the description. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and thank you Postman for sponsoring. I'll see you next time and happy coding.